She used to be an actress. Yeah. Has there been anything I saw? I think her biggest deal is she started a pilot. What's a pilot? Well, you know, the show's on TV. I don't watch TV. Yes, but you are aware that there's an invention called television, and on that invention they show shows. Yeah. Well, the way they pick those shows on TV is they make one show, and that's called a pilot. Then they take that one show and show other people to pick shows, and on the strength of that one show, they decide that they want to make more shows. Some get accepted and become TV programs. Some don't and become nothing. She started one of the ones that became nothing. That's tougher to do because I have more buttons and like I have to look. Turn it up. So loud. Ugh. Welcome to Couch Pilots, all of my friends. It's the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Jason, but you can call me Jason. And across from me is the man in red. This cat's in Philip. I have been known to be called the man in red before. What do you th- What do you think that means? Uh, it's where I wim- wear women's lingerie, and it's red, and I wear red stockings, and so they call me the woman in red. That was almost. Like, I know we joke around a lot here, but that almost came out too perfectly. Is that something you really do, wear women's clothing, uh, underwear a lot? No, I just wrote it down. That would be funny to say. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. It's funnier when it's not real, right? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's the best part. I've never really... I think I have worn... I may have worn women's underwear once or twice. Just, like, the panties, but I don't think... It's never like, like, oh, I gotta do this all the time. I don't... What what does that do for people? Do you know? I don't know. Okay. Tim? Why well, welcome why, to the why show, Tim? You, thanks. Why would you wear them if you don't know what the why? Why did you put on women's panties? Because they're available to like I was there with a girl or something. She, okay. she did not have them on, so you put them on. No, we both got in the same pair. You just thought like I just want to see what the fuss is about. I want yeah, to see. She if was this a is big woman. Ve- oh, she was a very large lady. Very large. Yes. Yeah. But we, um, but like, yeah, I don't know. It's like, and they're not built for men because I have a, um, a nut sack. Sure. Right. And that doesn't always like fit in there. Right. Uh, yeah. Sure. I feel like there's a lot of spillage. <laughs> you would think so. I grew up with a sister who dressed me in her clothes sometimes, but I don't think her ever her underwear. Yeah. I think that's the line. Yeah. Right? That's, that's the line. That would be inappropriate. Tim, you do, a, um, you're a friend of the show and you do a program called Challenged. Is that your only podcast right now? It is until Blake gets me on the uh, guys in the bowling alley. Okay. Just plug in there. Nice. Quick plug. You. Wow, you guys are working in tandem. This is perfect. <laughs> That's my only one right now. I, although I did I did do a show a couple years ago called Internet Freak Show. I only did six episodes, but it's coming back for season two. So Ooh, look really? for, that one. Look what's, for what's, that one. What's that about? And who do you do that with? It's just me by myself talking into a mic. It's super awkward and uncomfortable to do, <laughs> but it's fun. It's just uh, it's about mysteries or weird things that happen exclusively on the internet. Nice. Okay. I like so, that. Internet Freak Show. So what made you want to do it again, and why did you take a break? Uh, I run across these mysteries sometimes that are just really interesting, and so I did season one after I sort of accumulated a few in my head that I just thought I wanted to talk about. And so now, you know, it's been almost two years probably since I've done an episode, and I have another six just sort of like banging around. So I've gotten, I've written the outlines, I'm almost ready to start recording, so. So you just, you hear about these things, you really investigate the hell of them, and then you talk for half hour, hour about it? They're about ten minutes. They're like little okay. bite size, pretty short. Pretty short thing. Do you need a producer or a studio? Uh, Yeah, both. I have no idea what I'm doing. I let people listen and just say, like, tell me what, give me all your feedback that you have. How can they find the the episodes that you've done before? Uh, Just look it up on, like, any of the stores, you know. Uh, It's called what? Internet Freak Show. I try to give Blake some feedback on guys in a bowling alley, and he doesn't want anything to do with it. That's bullshit. Nothing to do with it. What's Why? Everything he does is perfect. I guess. What, what, What are you shaking your head about? What did you not? What did you? What did you implement that I said? Blake, this is just direct. <laughs> oh, <you>. sorry. Well, <laughs> it's not that I didn't want. I didn't like the input. Somebody else in this room gave me input as well, and I try to do it, but it's difficult. <laughs> what? What's the? Imp- what are we talking about? So, well, so Tim t- gave me input on, yeah. on guys in the ball, and you out. received it very well. I, but I you thought, don't know. I thought. I haven't listened to the new episodes, yeah. But right. Well, you don't know. But well, you didn't fight back. You didn't say, like, hey, shut up. I don't want to hear that shit. I didn't say that to him either. But well, he, didn't, he didn't implement mine. What, uh, what was your suggestion for a show? Uh, I said it was just hard, like, because there's always, you know, by nature of bowling, it's mm-hmm. hard to have a conversation between four guys because one guy's always up. 
Yeah. So I said, like, you should have some sort of topics that are that keep a conversation cohesive without it breaking up every time somebody leaves. Oh, okay. That was all I said. So ha- have have topics out I there. I implemented that. Okay. Right, I implemented there you go. that there you very go. much so. What so, you so, told me to do is mm-hmm. you told me to add a bunch of sound effects and bumpers. And I haven't had time since we did it. For the bits, because you have bits after certain frames. Yeah. Right? I, I think, like I said, like three to five second little bumpers just, just yeah. to like pump I, up and for I, the bit. I wrote down like 17 ones I want to do. Okay. And then what else did I say? This one I, I really like. Do you remember? He has a quote, a bowling quote. Oh, I like and, those, yeah. And I said, you should have the bowling quote. If you can get a sound bite from the person who said, you should have that be the first thing they hear and then go into the intro of the show. But, but and if, how- if there's not a sound bite, then you just read it. And then you go into the intro of the show. Okay. I, th- I so thought you the want quote to, from you, you want me to put the quote before the intro? Yeah. yeah. But what I'm going to do mm-hmm. is I'm going to put my bowling prayers before that. But that's new. No. We haven't, you haven't done that yet, though. I didn't know that was going to happen. I was trying to help. You, you are helping, but... God damn! You can't make you can't make butter out of chili. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> what does that saying mean? Yeah. What does that mean? Where did you hear it? And what does that mean? Huh? You, it means it means chili takes a long time. Butter takes a long time. Mm-hmm. But chili is spicier, and it takes even longer. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> and you don't put chili on toast. You can put chili on toast. Oh, that's true too. Yeah. <laughs> you don't eat butter out of a crock pot. Thank you. You know what? Hashtag don't eat butter out of a crock pot. I I don't want now now I, you know you know who I am. That's why I did what I did because you wanted to fuck with me a little bit. But you could, you know we're joking. But you, I, I think you're serious right 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 now. I think you're serious. I think you're completely serious. No, no. I think you're like I gave him some. I don't things. expect you to take all of my input and use it. I was just trying to be helpful. And then you shit all over me. I asked for your... (laughs) Speaking of chili, I asked for your input, and I'm still waiting on it. For what? You were going to make a list of ads. Oh, yeah, I'm going to write up some ads, but then you were going to give me a list of your bits to give you suggestions. I did! Oh, I don't think I got that. (laughs) I don't think I got that. Are you guys fighting? Should I leave the room and let you let you ask this out? Tim, why don't you uh, get the fuck out of here? <laughs> do we need to call Matt back to uh, no? We don't. No, mediate. We, don't. we don't want him on the show anymore. No. Oh, he didn't do a good job last time. No, obviously not. <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> Look, a marriage gone sour. Um, I've had a couple of those. Are you yeah. going to put a, a bowling lane in Air Force One? Oh, good idea. I I have looking into it because it would be a lot easier. So I could, we could record couch pilots. Right, and then I could just record guys in a bowling alley in in the air, um, but I don't want to give up the jacuzzi, and I don't want to give up the stripper pole, yeah. and and the horseshoe bar is like really popular, so it's I don't re- want. And I, it's really cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. That's thanks, tough. Thanks it's tough Donald, to fit it all in. Thanks Donald Trump for putting that in. What about the um, the one of those like uh, golden? What's that the game like? A, Showers? A, no, 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 no. Like one of those uh, it's golden like, tea, yes, but like you can do that for bowling and have that ball in there. What if we just get one of those? That's not the same. It's not the same. Yeah. Okay. Well, what, what, do they make a, a bowling simulator like they do golf simulators, or is that just called Nintendo Wii? <laughs> uh, no, I think there are a lot of technological advances in mm-hmm. bowling, and it's used out of the bowling alley. There's a lot of a data that can be produced from it. Yeah. But there's no like video game that's going to make you feel like you're there. Besides Wii Bowling. Could you install just like a really small version to scale, you know, but then your ball would be like really small. Mm, good just question. Small, like, that's just going to mess you up. Guys, this I'm show just is trying to try to help. I know. And, and we should have this offline. We're just trying to help. Like <laughs> take our suggestions for once. <laughs> I do have a question for you, Blake. The bowling master, Blake. I was watching a movie one time, and I forget the name of the movie. Big Lebowski. But they were bowling with balls that they could literally palm the ball. Yeah, like, like smaller like, it, balls. Duck bowling. Duck bowling. It's, that is a real thing. Yeah. And uh, we were in Milwaukee not too long ago. Me and the stewardess. And there is the oldest uh, mm. bowling alley in the country. It's duck bowling, um, where you still have to tip the pin setters. And uh, I wanted to go there, but then I was afraid to duck bowl. Isn't there also like candlestick bowling? Right? Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah, just, the, the pins are really skinny and tall. 
They used to have one at um... bowling. Bowling goes back to ancient Egypt, and I don't think mm-hmm. people realize that, but it does go back to ancient Egypt. Mm-hmm. I believe it. Were the balls shaped like pyramids? Oh, good question. Um, hello, Fred <laughs> Flintstone. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> is that, is that your, Wilma? Is that your friend Flintstone? <laughs> hey, Wilma, I'm going to fuck you in the ass tonight. Good Lord, I don't remember that one. You're wearing a pearl necklace, but I'm going to give you another one. Good God. Bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> the show is a lot of fun to do. Don't you think? This show? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought we were still going to talk about guys <laughs> in the bowling alley. Oh, no, we're not, we're not going to talk oh, about Oh, speaking that of which, I need to... Uh, I need to... Uh, uh, two more, one or two more trophies by Sunday. By Sunday? Yeah. How many do you have left? Uh, one. What? Yeah. What? No. Yeah, what? I have one left. How'd that happen? Uh, because we had a guest ready to go, and so I made a trophy in advance, and then he bailed. I just gave you that horseshoe trophy. You can use that. Okay. We're fine. Sometimes I go to garage sales, and I'll buy trophies and just right. give it to him. That's really sad, though. Isn't it people selling their old trophies? Yeah, it's the saddest fucking thing yeah. I've ever heard. I depressing. would never sell any of my trophies. <laughs> Even on the ocean. <laughs> what? <laughs> Listen back, you'll understand. I got it. I'm with you. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't care to understand whatever you're talking about. Sailing, um, take me away to where I'm going. Is that Chris do, uh, Cross? Do, do, Christopher do. Cross? Yeah. Jump. Yo. One the, the, one, you know one of the crisscross kids is dead? No really? shit. I didn't know that. Suicide? I don't know. Mm. I would assume so. I think after a while, you just forget your clothes are on backwards, and it, it probably causes a lot of problems for he you. He probably peed his pants a lot. Mm-hmm. You can't get it out in time. You got to you gotta try to... If it's a button fly, you're back there fiddling for like 10 minutes. Sure. Life's too short. Too short. Now, yeah. that was a good rapper. <laughs> he, he's still alive. That right? was the first... That, too short was like the first like dirty, dirty rapper yeah. I ever heard. Yeah, he was up there. Yeah, R.I.P. Do we have any fan feedback? Nope. Why? Uh, why do you think that is? Uh, uh, because our listenership is down seventy eight percent. That's a pretty specific number. What do you? What do you? Uh, what do you think that is the reason for? Well, I used to think it was because of summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now I just think it's because of content. <laughs> Our content's gotten real bad. Maybe it's fall. Maybe the problem is fall. Maybe it's the maybe it's that there is a season happening. Right. Yeah. So our numbers are falling. <laughs> yeah. I don't like that. What do you, what should we do? Should we change the format of the show? No, not at all. I think what we need to do is we need to find a really successful podcast. Mm-hmm. And kind of piggyback off them for a while. We've done that with uh, three times. <laughs> we've done that with Tim. We've asked him what, and he didn't. I remember he doesn't want to give up the secrets. Sure. Of what makes the show so popular? There's algorithms. Yeah. No, you got to just talk about shitty reality TV. That's we the talk thing. about shitty pilots that nobody ever watched. Okay, I, I see. Yeah, what you're do saying. you think we should yeah. do that? Do you think we should talk about do one season of a show? I thought about this. We should do uh, uh, season twenty two. Mm-hmm. We should do. There's ten episodes in a season, right? We should each pick five of our favorite shows and do the pilots of those shows. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I agree to that. Thanks. You want, you want to do that? What, what do you want? <laughs> do you watch five shows? I thought you didn't watch much TV. I don't. I, well, I do, but I don't. He watches magic TV shows. <laughs> so I want to do like I want yeah the magic show. I want to do uh, like Total Divas. He wants to also do one an uh, Australian no. uh, Orange is the New Black. Uh, oh yeah, yo no yeah that yeah. What's it called? Riverdale. Uh, <laughs> Wentworth, which is the greatest show ever. Uh, I also want to do nailed it the the uh, oh, the cake show. Yeah, with that big black girl. That's <sighs> what about Utopia. Can you find it? Is it? If I find it, can we do a season like that? You pick five of your own, yeah. I, I am terrified. I feel like the stuff that you watch is just awful. The things that you, <laughs> under your own will, watch is just the worst. You know what? What? Listeners? Yeah. Season 22? It's, it's on. You know what? And, I, and I'm sorry to pull a karaoke biggie and plan our show on air, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> But I would say that I think this, that season should be a competition. Whoever whoever ends up with the most listens at the end, based on what we choose, is the winner. The most listens, or like the most like uh, listener response. Like one listener, one begets the other. 
Bless you. What? And also with you. No, I think it should be based on numbers, download numbers. If uh, it, Yeah, based on whatever sh- – you pick five and I pick five, we add up our own respective five and whoever – do you, you like this idea, Tim? I do, as long as you get Commander Mark in there somehow. Commander Mark? One of you guys has got to do the Commander Mark I can only Mark pick one. five. <laughs> I'm I just saying, there's two five. golden girl. Jason's definitely going to do golden girls. We, no, you know we, did, we did golden how, girls. How about this? You can have Commander Mark. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, no. We, we already did golden girls. That's mm-hmm. off the table. We already did wings. That's off the table. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You want to do this? You want to challenge each other? Do you want to challenge each other? Oh, here we I go. I get it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. All right. Let's do that. For next season, we will have a... It, it won't be television shows that had one episode. It'll be some of our favorite programs, we period. Name, we need to name this. We need to name this season. We have time. Uh, we have time. <laughs> we have time. Oh, you want to do it right now? Then what's the what's the bet? Um, What are you putting up? Boy, I, I feel like nudity should be involved, but I could be wrong. I will do... Okay, I'll put up my bet, and then you put up your bet. That has to kind of match it. Okay. Uh, if I lose season 22... I will record every episode of season 23 in my underwear. Okay. If, if you lose... If I lose, I will... Your dog, Velma, I will pay for the milk sack operation. Shake on it. Shake on it. All right. He's, his dog's got a big flappy milk sack that's very oh, off-putting. That's disgusting. Yeah, it's like uh, it had an infection. It's, so it's, it's not like, her fault. It's like a, like a big... Almost like a, a flabby, undersided dorsal fin of oh, flesh. Yeah. Right, yeah. I can picture it. Yeah. That sounds you know disgusting. What? This is on, and I'm going to win, and you're going to have to pay a lot more money than you think it's going to cost. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that'll be fine. So, uh, speak, uh, speak right, I'll tell you what. Uh, instead of the surgery to fix the flappy titties, mm-hmm. you have to pay one year of allergy medicine. Yeah. Oh, okay, fine. Shake on it. All right. Yeah, allergy medicine versus you and your fucking disgusting underpants. <laughs> that's fair. It sounds like you lose either way, Jason. I'm not a winner. <laughs> well, no, we'll figure something out that's a little bit more fair and balanced, I think. Yeah, that's fair and balanced. The milk sack How needs to be fixed. How embarrassing is it to do a podcast and only underwear? <laughs> only if I get to berate you the whole time. I, you know what? You do it already. Let's just... Let's just... <laughs> not on your body, but I, I will I will oh, focus on that if you want. can't berate this body, baby. <laughs> body, baby. <laughs> uh, what else is going on with you, Tim? Well, speaking of weird pet shit, uh, we just learned that my cat has herpes. Nice. How, how does so that that's happen? That's a thing. I, I was not near your cat, just to let you know. <laughs> no, we don't know how it happened either, but apparently it is not transferable to humans, so we're safe. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it's apparently a cat thing. I don't know, man. Cats are horrible. What would well, be they, awful they if you They never had... go outside, right? They, do they ever go outside? Ours never does, no. She's so just... they've gotten it from each other. Yeah, they, they, at like uh, pounds and stuff, they said. Like rescue cats typically have, like a dog pound? have her- herpes. Yeah, we got her some taps right down, there, right down the street. Oh, is there one in the Germantown Hills area? A uh, pound? Yeah, oh, you mean down the street from where Ooh, we are? Down the street from where we are, yeah, I know. So you, you, don't, you personally don't have feline herpes? I, not that I know of. How is there manage- a test I can take? Um, I actually do have one here handy. You, you just have to uh, rub your dick on it. <laughs> Is it Blake's forehead? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blake's forehead is the feline. Is the, I will <laughs> consent. Well, what is? How does feline herpes manifest? Uh, it just looks like a cold, really. It just as a permanent cold. So the cat sneezes up these disgusting snot balls. You would not believe the snot that this cat sneezes up. It's pretty fucking foul. So it's time to destroy the animal. I would love to. Yeah, I would love to. Um, how do you, do you cure it? Do you rub some sort no. of salve on it? Uh, some sort of suppository? Nothing. Inhaler. Nothing. No, there's no treatment. You just you're just cursed with the knowledge that your cat has herpes, and is leaving snot balls around the yep. house. Yeah. So if your cat has herpes, <sighs> it should not be in the bedroom when you're having sex with your wife. He says it's non transferable. <laughs> oh, I missed that part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it shouldn't be in the bedroom anyway. That's pretty. I don't know. That's weird. That freaked right. me out. Right. That freaked me out. Yeah. yeah. Blake has experiences where he's been the same. He's been getting busy while an animal's been in the room. Here's the thing. So I had a boxer for twelve years. Mm-hmm. R.I.P. And R.I.P. R.I.P. Rory. Uh, R.I.P. Rory. Um, and I taught her um, indirectly that when I'm masturbating mm-hmm. in bed, right. she'll go to the end of the bed and look the other way. And if we're having sex, she will automatically get down. Um, this what, what do you mean when you say get down? <laughs> get down. Get off the bed. Down. Get off the bed onto the floor. Gotcha. Off the bed. Get on the floor. <laughs> Everybody's parents have sex. <laughs> 
So who sang that song? Huh? Who sang that song? Uh, they might be giants. Okay, I don't think that's right. Go ahead. And um, but the new foster dog, who is 110 pounds, hasn't quite learned that yet. So the other day I was looks right into your eyes while you're The other day I was off. trying to masturbate, and she's a cuddler, and she was, she's like laying up to me, and like she's wanting me to like itch her face, you know what I mean? So she's like putting it up, like where my penis is, and. Yeah, so we we have some work to do. Your penis reaches your face? (laughs) Her face. Good Lord. (laughs) Are there canine herpes? Is PETA listening to this? This feels like abuse. Why don't you... How about this? Close the door to your room. Can't do it. I cannot... Why not? I cannot... do it. Close the door on an animal that I have. I feel like it should it should roam the house. This is ridiculous. Like, that is ridiculous. I, Tim, I, I feel like I feel like if if I close the door and my dog is on the outside, the dog thinks that I don't love her. Tim, um, <laughs> you know it's a dog, right? It's Tim, just the dog. No. The dog doesn't think anything. Uh, it's a dog. Tim, uh, I had a really long relationship <laughs> with the dog, and it was the longest relationship I ever had. And so yeah, you no. Know. Everything you're saying, Tim, makes me believe that you're a logical person. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And you you were ready to destroy an animal simply based on the fact that I had herpes. Right. Yeah. That's also logical, it's, right? It's, it's, I can't cure it. Just put it. Yeah. Uh, Jason. Oh, I'm not done. Um, so, Tim, I think you sound like a fella that would be A-OK if all the animals in your house suddenly just disappeared. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. 100%. So, what is your masturbation slash sexual uh, regimen as it pertains to animal location? <laughs> I, I don't think the animal location impacts it at all. But, but like, it's not in the room or up in your face like, like Blake's fucking dog Absolutely is, right? not. No. Yeah. No. And do you think that the... The animal thinks you don't love it because of that? (laughs) No. I can't imagine projecting that sort of weird emotion on an animal. I would have to... Like, imagine living your life thinking, it's time to masturbate. If the dog isn't near me, or at least allowed or accessible to me during the masturbation... Like, like him thinking about the location of the dog is a factor when jacking off. Right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's got to be an unhappy life. Hey, that's... unhappy wife, unhappy life. <laughs> one, right? one more thing to think about when jerking yeah. off. <clears throat> Mine's <clears throat> usually just uh, pornography. <clears throat> and I also have to take into consideration if I do want to have actual sex with my wife, there's a 110-pound dog in between us. And how does that happen? It doesn't. And you my kick the afraid, dog off the bed. You, know, where, you push the dog off the bed. Why would you kick the dog off the bed? It's so you can have wife. sex with your wife. The dog no. is outside the room. You close the door. You, you give the dog a how, how sad would that dog be? Who gives a fuck? You know what? You know what? Fuck that dog. Kick it outside there. Get that dog is lucky to be here in this house and have food and caring parents. You deserve five one to five minutes of sex with your wife once a month, okay? Nope. That's that's ridiculous. That's that ridiculous. ridiculous. That's fucking ridiculous. Can't do it. I'm not done yet. Go please go ahead. Did you bump her? Awesome. It is awesome. Did I do what? I thought maybe you pushed the bumper. No, no, no. You have more you want to add about your fucked up dog situation? All right, so... Um, you're in a relationship where there's a dog, correct? Yeah. Well, she. I'm in a relationship with a human woman, and she owns a dog. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. And that dog has never, inter- has never interfered with sexual activity? Okay, This this is the only thing I'll say about that. When things start happening, the dog just leaves. Yeah, because it's been trained to leave. <laughs> How do you train it without kicking it out when it's well, happening? Because be, for me, when I had Rory, she was disgusted by what was going on, <laughs> and so she left the room. Okay, let me say this. You've had two female dogs. The dog I'm dealing with is a male. That may have something to do with it. The, honestly, the dog, I, I think it, it sees me as the alpha when I enter a situation. Nice, because you beat it. Because I kicked the <laughs> fuck out of that dog when that when his mom's not looking. No, no, no. But like that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, it might be a difference because of the gender of the animal. But that dog, if something starts happening, that dog just like it just oh. automatically knows. Like you don't have to go Psst, or anything like nope. that. Like it'll just walk out the room, <laughs> go into the living room, and get on the couch and just hang out. Really? Absolutely. What if you gave the dog a treat and threw it out the out of the door and then closed the door? Then That's the dog mean. would feel loved, right? That you gave the dog a treat. Then if you give that dog a treat, every time it's gonna think it, it's gonna be abandoned. 
This is ridiculous. Ooh. All right. I'm this out of ridiculous. ideas. That was my only idea. And that was a good one. Yeah. You know, not well, not, not according to Blake. Blake. That was the world's shittiest idea, according if, to Blake. If somebody throws you a treat and you go chase it, and then you're locked out of your house. Did you hear the episode we did about the dog brothel? I don't believe I did. Um, I, I, I had proposed an idea where uh, people could download an app. They could have it's like a it's um like a dating app for animals. I think I did that. Yes, this is ringing a bell now. Okay, and then you could find an animal locally that you because animals want to have sex. They they just by by the fear uh, the 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 nature of being alive, the sheer uh, existence. They want to have sex. That's what mm-hmm. everything that's alive wants to do. They want to pr- reproduce, so they want to have sex. They don't know what sex is. They want to have it though. We often say no. To sex with animals, they your cats may have never had sex before, right? right? Mm-hmm. How but, can they never have sex if they have herpes? Well, they those well, these are obviously dealing with whore cats there, but um, so we have whore cats. Yeah, I agree. I wanted to create. A, I, I wanted to create a, a business that could facilitate consensual sex between two animals, match them up, clean animals, get tested, and they can just they can have sex because that's what animals want. Mm-hmm. We, right now, I feel like people are denying their pets sex. Sure. What do you think about a dog brothel? I think it's great. Can we expand the idea to also include people? I'm all for uh, consensual legal sex work. Yeah. Not, not dogs and people, but like people and people. Oh. Just to make that clear. I was... How about the people over here? What about the people over there? The people, the people, the people, people? I thought... Or I a mean, Blake situation where they have sex in the same room together, but not with each <clears throat> other, you know? Hmm. Well, I've never had two animals at the same time of opposite sex. I would never do that. So you, I would never have a male dog. The devil's threesome. Period. So you, you, so not between humans and animals. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's not what I meant either. Um, so, but this but just episode is brought to you by Jeff Peanut Butter. What is that supposed to mean? You put some of that on your dick, and a dog comes and licks well, your yeah, dick. That's, that's what it's less funny when it, it's more funny when it's implied. You ruined and, and, it, Jason. And now when I say it, it, I love. You fucked it up. He always fucks up my jokes, right, Tim? Yeah, he does. I mean, you've listened to a lot of these episodes. He's always fucking my jokes up. He didn't even get the sailing joke. I know. And you I was did. with you, dude. I was no, with you. Yeah, was, yeah. And you know what? There was 13 people all over the world that laughed at that, <laughs> yeah. except him. I know. I didn't get it. I'm, I'm not going to think about it. I'm, I don't want to know anything about your joke. I don't think it was funny. It, honestly, it upset me. Why? Do you have something against sailing? We're talking about the ice solution, right? Movie? <laughs> What's wrong with my buoy? <laughs> I got a little dingy. <sighs> Alright, let's move the show along. It's not funny when you have to spell it out like that. The captains have turned on the fasten seatbelt sign. Um uh, last week we called the Halloween store to try to move Halloween to the um the end of like the last weekend of the month versus the 31st. Mm-hmm. Do you have any idea of who we should call this week? No, that's not helpful. I got nothing. Is there a business you frequent? We call it Chuck E. Cheese and ask him the, the Peoria Chuck E. Cheese has recently um, had a grand reopening. And I'm curious as to what that entails. Uh, okay. New menu, new games, Less guns, less beer. I'm very curious about that. Less guns. It is funny when you go into a store or like a business that's meant for children and they have a picture of a gun and then a circle sure. around that gun and then a line through the gun right. from the circle. It's always amazed me. I I, I, I remember showbiz. You never had to worry about that. I love showbiz. It was great. It was dark and dingy and there was arcade games. That's all you needed. And the robot. creepy robots. Oh, the, the, But they all worked. Yeah, but they were creepy. Yeah. The gorilla? The gorilla's great. Mm. Hey, hashtag gorilla's great, right? <laughs> we got rid of a gorilla for a Welcome mouse. Welcome to Chuck E. Believe Cheese's that? Reservation and Information Center. You can also make party reservations online at www.chuckecheese.com and receive 20 free tokens for booking online. So bad. That's to properly right. direct your call, please listen to all options before making your selection. I think I missed the you right one. You must make a selection from one of the options to get to a StarCast member for further assistance with reservations or any questions you may have. Oh my god, hurry up. For birthday information, including organizations, press Just 1. Just zero. For fundraising information... I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. I didn't like zero. Don't forget, you can also make your party reservations online. For information about our birthday party package, or to make a reservation... So, the other day, Tim, 
Had the a, best party I had, ever. I'd check I had it. a problem with my phone. The right? <laughs> and um, I was getting like, you know, MMS download instead of text messages. Mm-hmm. And um, then I noticed there was an R on top of my bars, which means roaming. roaming right, yeah. Right. I was like, why am I roaming? And uh, so I tried to call Verizon from home to, to get it figured out. I couldn't get to anybody human. Yeah. So I went to the store, and the guy goes, I showed him what was going on. He said, oh, yeah, hold on a minute. He goes and gets a new SIM card, puts a new SIM card in, and the, the problem's fixed. Mm-hmm. Humans beat, or pardon my French, trump computers every time, right? I would, yeah, 95% of the time, yeah, that's true. I've been a, uh, uh, a Verizon customer for 20 years. Mm-hmm. And I've hated every experience I had with Verizon. Yeah. Every time. Except this one. You know, it was, it was obviously an older guy, uh, salt and pepper hair, probably was in his uh, late 40s, mm-hmm. and uh, scrawny, had bows cordless headphones draped over his shoulders Mm -hmm. but he took care of me right it was a sim card put it in all done there you go i didn't even know verizon had sim cards that's how out of it i I didn't know either yeah if i would have known i i would have not i I, that's the first thing i would have thought of yeah and he had a little thing on his keychain that like it came out popped it right out yeah um when you're thinking about cell phone service, obviously every cell phone service fucks you in the ass. Of course, yeah. Right? So if you go to like mobile or whatever, uh, yeah, they're cheaper, but they're piggybacking off of Verizon and mm-hmm. Sprint's towers. Right. You don't get the good service. Right. You get the worst service of, of those yeah. towers. Yeah. Well, uh, who do you use? I use AT&T. I went over to AT&T for the first iPhone. It was only on AT&T. And okay. then I've just stuck with them because it's easier and fuck it. So how many phones do you have on your plan? Uh, two, just me and my what? wife. Don't ask me how much I pay. It's depressing. Sorry. Uh, hi, this is Jason. Who's this? Tristan. Hey, Tristan. Um, I was just talking to a buddy of mine, and he said that you guys had a, a, grand, a re-grand opening there. Is that right? Uh, let me check the location. Oh, you're not... How, how do I talk to someone at the specific location? One second, I have the number. Right. <clears throat> the one on uh, West Lake. Yeah, how, how do I contact someone at that store directly? I have the number, one second. Okay. All right, let me know you're ready. Go ahead. Uh, 309-688-2874. And that'll, that'll give me someone directly, or is that just going to give me another uh, bunch of numbers i got to press? Directly to the store. Awesome. Thank you for your help. Bye, Tristan. You're welcome. Bye-bye. I don't know, man. Tristan was a bitch. You gave up on Tristan? I got him. <clears throat> you got him? Yeah. No. That guy's fancy. Photographic. So movie. anyway, you, <clears throat> so you've used AT and T for how long? 10, uh, 10, 10, 11 years. All right. And how many lines do you have? Just two. Me and my wife. Yep. Unlimited, unlimited everything. Yeah. And you've already paid off your phones. No, both we have two phone payments okay. on there too. And how much is your bill each month? Two fifty two. Mine is two fifty two as well. Yeah. Unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. I'm sorry. What was your name? Hannah. Hey, Hannah, this is Jason. Are you actually at the Westlake location? Yes, I am. Awesome. Um, I heard you guys just had a a re-grand opening. Is that right? Yep, we had it on the September 17th, but we we still have, like, it where we have, like, all the new stuff that you could come in and look at everything. What what happened there? What's the re-grand opening? What's, What's changed there? So what they did was they took the stage out that had, like, all the characters on it. And then they put a dance floor, and we got some new games. And they remodeled some of the inside. Okay. <laughs> now, I, I have I have conflicting feelings about this because I, I grew up in the Peoria area. I used to go there when it was showbiz. I'm sure you have no idea what that is. No offense. 
but I love the scary robots that were up there. But at the same time, I've been looking to make a lot of changes in my home uh, around animatronics. Do you guys still have those old animatronics available? Um, I am not for sure, but I can hand it to the manager. That would be and that would I'm be sure great. She can help you a lot better with the robots for you. Thank you. I'd love to talk to you about robots. Thank you, Hannah. Hannah. Hannah Montana. Barbara. Hannah Bobana. Hannah Mana Bobana. Bobana Bana Fofana. I will pay some money if I can get one of those robots. How much money? How, what would you pay for that? Yeah, what's that worth to you? I have $36. I think that can get you an eyeball. Maybe a back row of oh, teeth. The Italian drummer, the pizza guy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. I want that thing that pops up out of a stump. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that guy. She's stump. She's stump. She's stump. She might be Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, that's uh, that's shocking. They removed the best part of that, the, that's the, the whole show point. experience. Right, that's the whole point. I'm sorry, what was your name? This is Crystal. I can help you. Hey, Krista, this is Jason. Are you the manager there? Yep. Awesome. Um, I was just talking to Hannah. And she was very helpful because I, I had heard that you guys had like a grand reopening, but I didn't know what that was. And she says you guys got rid of all the uh, the androids there. Is that right? The animatronics, yep. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, do you guys still have those available? Like, if I wanted to, pr if I wanted to purchase them? Uh, no, we don't have them. Uh, we did our remodel at the end of August, and our grand reopening was the first week of September. So all that's already gone. They took out the stage and all that, like the second week of August. So you guys, ha you have no more animatronics there. Nope. Okay. And so it's just like a big dance floor. Yeah, and then what? What's that? Yeah, it's a big dance floor with a bunch of TVs above it now. What do you think? Do you like it better? Because I, I'm an old man. I'm an old chunk of coal. But I, I remember when I was young, that was a lot of fun. Do, do you miss the animatronics? Because I'm trying to decide whether or not to come in back, back in there after the remodel. I uh, grew up on the animatronics myself. Yeah. So, but I like I like both. I like the dance floor, and I also like the animatronics. So. If, if you wanted being a manager there and during going through that remodel, if you wanted one of the animatronics, was that available for you to take home? Nope. Oh man, I, I'm curious what they do with those things. You got you've heard of Five Nights at Freddy's, right? Well, the thing is, is when they took the animatronics out, they parted them out. And gave most of the parts to the other stores. So the only thing that was left was like Jasper's arm or like his hat. Jasper's arm or and like hat. That's terrifying. Hat. Yeah, it wasn't the whole animatronic that went to the trash. So they basically, you guys use the parts to assist other stores until they go through their own remodel. Yep. Okay, that's smart. That makes sense. But still, oh my God, to get, a, yep. to get Jasper's arm, that'd be wild. My, I have a buddy who he. I know, right? We we. Yeah. My my buddy is telling me right he now. Was, he was like all excited. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I believe it. My my friends yeah, tell me he would pay ten thousand dollars for Jasper's arm. Yeah, you can only imagine how many calls we've had. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. So, I, um, what what do you think? Are you happy with the remodel? Or, or what's your favorite game? My fa favorite game. I don't have one yet because uh, I don't get to playtime <laughs> and you have to have a child to come in there right but i you have what you have to have a child to come in the door right again, i'm sorry you have to have a child to enter the premises nope you don't no, it okay do okay that's good news i'm gonna make nope. a note of that yeah. and you guys still sell beer you just, yeah you just have to be 18 okay I'm, I, I'm going to be 18 soon so that's perfect you guys have uh you guys have beer there And that is 21 and older? Uh, it's only one. Yes, you have to have an ID and <sighs> one uh, drink per person. Uh, one drink per person? Yep. Wow. Okay. And um, uh, you, can have a minimum of, you can have a minimum of two beers while you're here, but it's only one drink per person. Each person has to have an ID. So a minimum of two beers. What's a maximum? About probably like eight, ten beers? No. Could only have two beers. Oh, a maximum of two beers. Okay, that's good too. Yep. 
Okay, and then my last question is, I was there a while back. A friend of mine who's way older than I am is 30 years old, and they just turned 30, and they had their birthday party. I thought it was odd that a 30-year-old would have a birthday party there, but um, I tried to, I offered the person who worked there $20 to use the Chuck E. Cheese suit just to be have fun with my friend, and they said no. What 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 does it take to put on the Chuck E. Cheese costume? How, how can I get in one? We can't. The only people are allowed in it is management and cast members. Are you taking applications? Yes, we are. <laughs> okay. Well, my name is Jason. Are, yeah. I'm very handsome, and I will be in there to fill out an application soon. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. I can't wait to see you. You're welcome. Have a good evening. I love you. Goodbye. Jason, <clears throat> I've said this many times, but I'm going to say it again. I'm not gay. No. <laughs> oh, okay. No. I honestly think that you are the best call person ever. Like, first of all, you can you can, you can can keep a straight face. Second of all, you just, you you nailed that shit. And I, I, I'm impressed every time. If, if listeners have listened to this show for... 20 years, like most people have. When you call somebody, I just shut the fuck up and sit back. I think it's usually because you're annoyed and you hate this. No, not at all. I, I don't like it because you're good at it. Um, you did a great job. I always like when uh, people praise me. And I also like the fact that we're 45 minutes into the show and nobody <clears throat> even knows the name of, of the pilot that we're watching. Today we discussed the pilot episode of Lip Shit Saves the World from uh, the Year of Our Lord 2000 ad. Only seven great year. <clears throat> oh, Ooh, God. excuse me. Great year. Uh, I was 32 years old when this came out. Uh, Tim, how old were you? 28, I guess. Nice. 26. All right, it's so, so it's so odd anymore when I'm the youngest I'm, person. I'm the oldest again. Oh, that that's always the case. <laughs> I just turned forty, Blake. Just turned like a week did you, ago. Did you just turn forty? Oh, really? Yeah, we missed your did. birthday. I just did. Yeah, last last week. Facebook didn't there. tell me. I deactivated my Facebook so that people wouldn't wish me a happy birthday that don't know me. <laughs> oh, Are you so serious? Sad. Super annoying. I no, hate I, that. I feel shit. bad. Do oh, me, no, 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 do no, me no, get please, your present. Okay. I'll get your present no, right now. I don't want a present. No, I deactivated no, it so people wouldn't wouldn't do this shit. No, I feel bad. I, I'm going to get you a present. <laughs> no, I want you to feel bad. That's fine. I, you know what? But don't do anything to to feel better. What did you just do for stay, your birthday? Just stay feeling bad. Did you do anything for your birthday? No. Are you fucking kidding no, me? Your 40th birthday? Nothing. Let's call his wife. No. What do I need? I don't have her number. <laughs> me neither. Uh, she she changed her. She blocked me. So. <laughs> oh, not really. Just oh, thank lighten God. up, you guys. Tim, oh. you had a 40th birthday and you had no party or nothing. Ooh, no, I didn't really do anything. Are you fucking kidding me? No. I'm pissed. I'm I'm super. I think pissed he's. About it. it sounds to me like he's pulling a Leah. AJ, nothing but a number. I I don't like this. I don't like this at all. I I feel like we have to have like a. I don't feel whatever you're feeling. I don't feel that way. I, I respect him too much to force a party on him to make me feel better. <laughs> That's one of those things where I've known. I feel, I feel like an asshole friend because <laughs> I feel like an asshole friend because I didn't know it was his birthday. It's a fortieth. Got kind him of dead to no, rights. No, no, no. Yeah, that's perfect. Fuck me. Well, okay, so is this? Are you? Did your birthday already happen at the yeah, time of this yeah, recording, happened. or it will happen by the time this comes out? This episode? Oh no! It happened October third. So oh, that was, oh. A, month, that was a month ago. <laughs> that was a long time. Ago. His I'm is the well third. into my forties now. Uh, Dustin is on the fourth. Yeah, ten oh. four. Goodbye. Goodbye. Tim, do you want to go out for your birthday? Seriously, like we'll do something. Uh, do you want to go get? Sure, you want to go get fucked up? I would love to just go out. It doesn't have to be for my birthday, but like we can go out. Right. You'd have to wear a tiara that says forty on it. <laughs> no. Then no. Okay. All right. Then pass. <laughs> Two forty is my name, and love is my game. Ask mm. me mm. again, mm. and I'll tell mm. you the same. Mm. Is that too short? I uh, love too short. You know what? You don't bother me about him. He was not tall enough. <laughs> was that it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been drinking beer. Uh, let's see. You've been doing this show for too long. You can read his mind. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. His mind. Um, it's not 2007 right now. It doesn't seem like that far away. Oh, my God. It's 12 years ago. Am I too high now? What are you doing? You had a high hat. It's fucking... Okay. It's fucking up my ears. Let's let's go back to 2000 Ad 7. In, In our, our minds. minds. And to do so, we'll talk about things that happened that year, such as November 6th. 
A suicide bomber kills at least 50 people in mazar i sharif Afghanistan, of course, including six members of the National Assembly. It doesn't matter. Over there. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Those people's lives have no value? No, not at all. (laughs) This from a guy that treats his dog the way he just talked about it. But people, if they're in a foreign country, like just forget. Just don't even worry about that. Make... America great again. <laughs> Keep your dogs happy. <laughs> That's my. Act. But but this this can't be surprising to someone like you, Tim, who I think sees pets on the like. Pets are great. If you love pets, take care of them. Be a good pet owner. They are so not equal to a human not being. Not even close. Not and even you close. have to make decisions to make sure you and your human being family nope. is happy and healthy. Yep. Versus nope. that, I mean, it's a member of the family, yep. but it is an animal. No. Yeah. Hundred percent. I go so far as to say, like pet charities, Mm -hmm. they should not exist. Fuck you. If there's (laughs) if there's extra money to help the, you should should help people. What about uh, no? What about I would rather (laughs) feed a dog than I would rather feed a homeless fucking person. What about an animal with a cleft palate? That's a little twisted. That's a little twisted. No, it's not. What about animals with cleft palates? Is there a charity for that? Huh? Animals with cleft palates. Oh, wow. Good God. <laughs> that's racist. That's the most racist thing that's ever happened on this show today. I, to be honest with you, I will give money to a dog charity before I would give money to a human charity. I, I, that I, sounds I, like something an insane person would say. <laughs> Not at really, all. So you see a homeless person dying and a dog dying. You're going to save the dog? Fuck yeah, I will. Every day. That's bizarre. That's just because that's okay, he day. knows. It's a very well, it, well, for him, it's a guarantee that that dog will lift Jif, lick a Jif <laughs> off his nuts. And the homeless man, it's not a guarantee. It's no, about it's a 50 50. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, no. I, will, I will stand by that for the rest of my life. What if it was a dog suicide bomber? What if a dog made a decision? Yes, strap explosives to me. I'm going to go into a marketplace. I'm going to waltz through Marrakesh. Explain and, uh, to me how that dog is going to make that decision. The same and way it's going to have its it. feelings hurt by you kicking yeah, it out of the bed. The same fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're outnumbered on this one, man. No, it is the same thing. That's exactly the same. <laughs> Got a new podcast idea. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, November 14th. A uh, high speed one from London to Channel Tunnel is open to passengers. We're this needs to happen here, right? Yeah. Have high speed like Elon Musk magnet thousand mile per hour travel, right? Right. Just, mm-hmm. There is uh, the United States is a very like spacious. <laughs> that's exactly what I would use to describe. Right, that's how I would say. It. Finally, we could all agree on something. <laughs> spacious. <laughs> Sammy Hagar said, I can't drive 55. You right. know what I say? What? I can't drive 85. <laughs> He's the Red Rocker? <laughs> this is the best episode ever. <laughs> it really is. Sammy Hagar is the Red Rocker, right? What would you be called? <laughs> the Sad Cocker? <laughs> he, he grew his pubes out. That's where he is. <laughs> I shaved him. I shaved him. No, you did not. No, I did. I did. I, 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 since last week? No, 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 no. Shaved him, like, trimmed him close or, like, big, Hold on. Sta- like, stand up. I, I, would, I would buck. Okay, so. Show him your stab wound. Stand up and show him. No, can, I don't want to see your nuts. You can, Are you going to show no, no, your nuts? No, it's not his nuts. He's not. But you can see his pubes. Oh, yeah. No, no why did you pull him down more when it was just <laughs> me last week? <laughs> <laughs> no, but for a while there. Everybody knows I was bushy, bushy brown. But I stopped that, and I, I shaved it all off. Right. I kept it trimmed up for like two months. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was like a baby's butt, you know. nice. And- I don't shave my... I leave something. Oh, wh- where are you going to leave it? Which which part do you leave? Well, you, I think you mean you're you're not bicking it down. Like you're not using no, a razor blade. Shit. I bick that shit all the way down. You use a razor blade? I use a razor blade on my nuts and below, oh, and then above that I trim. How do you trim? With just like a little buzzer, like no, I mean, I mean like like pattern wise, <laughs> like a heart, a, cl- a club of diamonds, or four of clubs. <laughs> a club of diamonds. <laughs> what are I do, you, I, do Satan? A, I do a club of diamonds because I'm Satan. My my dick is as red as the devil's dick. <laughs> so I was. Raw dogging it all the way. Well, hold on, right? hold on. So you you shave with a bick? No, well, no. You used to. No. What 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 kind of you do maintenance? Clipper, clippers and scissors. I I would not take a bick to my dick. No but, way. But but what about but no the way. but the nutsack? I I you can't, you, can't, you, can't, you like pull it tight and go. 
No. What I sh- I use a razor on my yeah, nutsack to do that. I can't, but I feel like in a, like an electronic razor, I'm, my sack's gonna get caught up in there. I'm well, terrified of that. I, yeah, I, yeah. I think I use scissors on the balls. Ooh, having something pointy and like scissors but a is, bic is is pointy. A bick is just like it, it's shaving it off. Where scissors, you have the there's so many like you could you could snip a slit in your sack. Yeah. You could do that slit with a razor. Sack? You, you could, could snip do that a slit. With a razor. Snip a slit. Maybe, maybe the difference. Do you guys do it in the shower? I'd, ha- I'd have to. I'd have to watch you do it. I don't know. <laughs> you know what? No, guys, I don't. I don't do I it. I got a shower. Let's go. No, I do so, it in my shower, but with not the shower running. So I, I was okay. notorious for having a bushy, bushy blonde hairdo, right? Oh, you had a yeah. That's what you, you were had notorious blonde for. Blonde pubes. And so I bought a razor specifically for that. I shaved it all down, right? All right. And then I took the bick to it, and I bicked the shit out of everything. And for two months, I kept it like squeaky clean, like a five year old. I it was squeaky clean. I don't know how appealing that is, no, that Espe- sound especially good. to women. Sound good. Yeah. yeah, but uh, I, I kept that going, and then I wasn't getting any more sex, and so I just stopped doing it. Find so. a happy medium. You, do, but you, do, you don't want to look like fucking Moses burning yeah, bush did down Molly, there. Did Molly like tell you Moses. she wanted to have sex with a five-year-old? Is that why you started this maintenance routine? <laughs> you know, things are getting she stale. She wouldn't yeah. have sex with a 45-year-old named Blake either, <laughs> which is unlike my ex-wife. Uh, November 16th, up to 15,000 people are believed to have been killed after Cyclone Sadir hits Bangladesh. Hey, no, Blake don't give a shit. A cyclone coming? Keep your pets safe. Human beings' life more valuable than a pet. No, I'm sorry. not at all. Why is that? Huh? Why is that? Unconditional love. So, uh, my, my, okay. What's the difference between a, a a human child with Down syndrome versus a dog? What's the difference? Yeah, don't they have unconditional love for you? Well, that's. that's are, 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 isn't a child are, with Down are, syndrome? Are, are, are. What do you got, Down syndrome? <laughs> isn't a child with Down syndrome like an innocent? Like like you would consider an animal. What's the difference? I don't think uh, an animal is innocent. I think they understand and they are compassionate and they're loyal and they're loving. Whereas a kid isn't. <laughs> 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 Not sure why that's funny. <laughs> Tim, do you know why we chose to watch? <laughs> Right off the comments of Blake and the Down syndrome <laughs> child, do you know why we watched Lip Shit Saves the I do. Life? Let's change the topic as soon as we can here. It was available to watch. It was free. And it was a pilot that never made it to series. Whether it aired or not is irrelevant. That's very good. Very good. Told you, biggest fan here. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. You can find the entire episode of Lip Shit Saves the World by subscribing to Couch Pilots in SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to YouTube. Tim. And you know what to do, dude. You know, he wrote that down. He said, Uh, he wrote down, you know what to do, dude. Good. I, I don't care what you have to do to get it accomplished. Sure. No, for sure. Boom. He's two for two right now. He's he's a classic two for. Right. Let me see. I also did the in our minds thing. It's pretty oh, good. Three Just saying. Three. Classic three for avocado then, three. If a high five happens, I will whip you right. You what? With you guys. High five that shit. <laughs> Summary of the pilot. In a bizarre twist of fate, a young outcast learns he might be the one person who can save the world. Blake? Uh, B plus. Do you want, do you want to uh, rate the uh, summary? Uh, B minus. Okay. Okay. Interesting facts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Interesting Facts. Jason has scoured the internet to find facts about You don't this know pilot. what hard times are, Daddy. No, we've had hard times all our lives. Please, speaking of hard times, do not in any way shape or form comment on the comment section. on these comment facts. You're a dick. Awesome! You're awesome too. I like all the, all the sound effects. We love you. I like doing all the sound effects. We love you. Uh, was produced for NBC. The show was given the green light to shoot a pilot for NBC in July of 2006. The show was not picked up for air. Fact. Okay. Fact. A creator of the program, Dan Fogelman, describes the show as... Oh, I loved when he was with the Eagles. Oh, did you? Was that a fact? That's a fact. It's a fact that he does do love it. 
Um, Dan Fogelman describes the show as uh, the Matrix if Keanu Reeves wasn't good looking. I don't know if that's accurate, but that's what he said. He created it, in fact. Um, and the final fact, tagline, who's the shits? He's the shits. Which seems like an inappropriate thing for NBC to say. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to fly. Interesting facts over. What? Interesting facts over. Oh. Just in time. He was about to say something that wasn't a fact. I was trying to help him out. I think I did. Yeah. NBC stands for uh, National Broadcasting Company. It is my favorite of the networks. Really? Sure. Would you put money down on it? What's that? Would you put money down on it? Well, it's my opinion. Uh, so I would you put... You win. So I, yeah, I would win. Yes, I would put money down on it. Thank you. How many beers do you have, Ian? Huh? Are those all empty cans? One, two, three, four, five, Let's just move on. One, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one,
Is that it? Did I even get the one? That that is correct. One that, that is one. Has one lift one. propulsion mm-hmm. thrust thrust. Yep. Propulsion. Aviation. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's the real answer. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a, a softball. That's a day one kind of Phoenix, well, Phoenix Online thing. Yeah. So of course. What? 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 <laughs> just, just skip it. What's that? What about the people that don't fly? Well, you got it right. What? Okay. What, what else do you want me to do with it? That's true. Right, I'm going to set the clock for ten minutes, and we're going to discuss in detail the uh, the plot of Lipshit Saves the World, and we'll go ahead and start doing that with Tim. With Tim, right now. Go ahead. I knew you guys were going to open with me. Finally, I was I was prepared. Uh, opening you a graffiti on your. I, well, I've been I doodle when I sit. Uh, Open up in a classroom, high school classroom, with the teacher yelling lip shits over and over and over again. It's like Bueller. Like Bueller. That. Mm-hmm. Bueller. Lip shits completely uninterested, not willing to chime in here, like a human being should. <laughs> Announce his presence, like, uh, I'm right here. I hated this kid, front, like, immediately. Yeah. Really? Oh, I hated this kid. And uh, we find out it's a dream sequence, because... He, he, did, he did everything... Did dream sequence. Did you say sequence? He said s- sandwich. Dream sandwich. <laughs> I believe you can bake me through the nap. Yep. Adam Lipschitz is the star of the show, and the teacher's calling his name, and he goes into, like you said, a dream sandwich, and he does karate kicks, he insults the teacher, he kisses a lady, he belittles a woman, he uh, knocks out a bully, he does all the shit you want to do in about 20 seconds. Right. And then he wakes up, and it didn't happen. He's just a fucking nerd Mm -hmm. in high school, right? Yeah, were you Tim? Were you a nerd in high school? Of course, I'm still. I still am. Yeah, of course I was. Jason? No. Uh, okay. I I am now though. All right. So uh, Lipschitz goes home, and his mom is watching Jerry Springer. She mm-hmm. doesn't have a job. Uh, she he's like talking to her. She's not interacting. She's all worried about Jerry Springer. Right before he goes home. He's in the hallway as a nerd, and like I think a always a a, a bully like pushes him into a locker, and he like flies into it. Yeah, yeah. This I immediately make the note here. This is very cartoony, and it almost is kind of Greg Garcia esque, like right. one of his shows. Don't you think so? Who, who's Greg Garcia? Greg here. Garcia who's is right? the creator what? of the Guest Jesus Book, Christ. the creator of My Name oh, yeah. Is okay. Earl, okay. the creator of Raising Hope, and what uh, what else does he do? He, he did, he's done like five, like he's really had like four or five successful television. Mm-hmm. He's a producer. We've talked to him a, a handful of times, but it he's felt cool. By the he's, way, he's, he's like he's like my best <laughs> name, friend, name best dropping over there. All right, have you run into him in an airport? Uh, we're planning on it. All right, I can't t- wait to. Well, the the airports that we go to are kind of small. That's right, yeah, private hangars. Hashtag I get you. Mount Holly. His, so his mom is a uh, just kind of a mess of a yeah, lady. Just a. Just a it reminds me of my stepmom, Kathy. Oh, yeah. Like, my dad worked at Caterpillar. Yeah. And she sat at home all day and smoked cigarettes and watched TV. And so I would come home, and she would be sitting on the couch watching TV, smoking cigarettes. So this really hit home for you. I, oh, it so hit home. Because my last name is Clayton. <laughs> um, yep. Yep. Um, so then he goes to his living room, and then uh, out of nowhere, Leslie Nielsen appears as Leslie Nielsen. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah, and he's got a tuxedo on. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Lipschitz got a soccer game to get ready for, and Leslie Nielsen shows up. And the first joke, Leslie Nielsen joke, is the "Don't call me Shirley." <laughs> and I, to be honest with you, I enjoy that. I was like, "Did That's you perfect. enjoy that?" I thought that was stupid, and no, they did that I, joke like four times. I, this I, I, I enjoyed it. Oh, I, I hated it. it. I hated it. They never mentioned the the movie Airplane. They don't mention that. They probably couldn't mention it. I assume, yeah. but they definitely do that joke, like you said, like four times. Yeah. Um, they go outside, and Leslie uh, Nielsen's telling Adam, "He's like, hey, you're special. You are he, and uh, you got to watch out for the man in red." Sure. And, and Adam's like. Man, this program that I'm starring in, it started off with a dream. Am I dreaming right now? Right, he thinks he's in a dream again. I, and honestly, I don't know. We, we, I we think as an audience, know. we don't know, right? Uh, know. And so uh, Lipschitz is at, at his soccer game, and he's not even paying attention. He's just thinking about meeting Leslie Nielsen. Is this real? Is this not real? And he's been looking at some cheerleaders, too. Staring at Rebecca Quick. Fellini. Hell and yeah. And he gets plowed <laughs> by the other team. And what, what was it? 
That's what's you have to go to the bathroom? No, I gotta plug in your fucking <clears throat> tablet. So I'm gonna take care of it. Oh fuck me, right? So uh you know, he's not paying attention. He gets like like swallowed by the other team. Mm-hmm. And so Leslie Nielsen uh is gone. And uh, he ends up at Applebee's with the man in red. Right. And what happens then? Uh, Virginia the wait. My my next yeah, note no, is yeah, it, Virginia the waitress mine was comes Applebee's up. Applebee's Virginia. This hey, is, this is we super not weird. My grandma, by the way, <laughs> not my grandma. This is super <laughs> weird, though, right? This part with Virginia at the yeah. at Applebee's. Well, I noticed that that is she's from Parks and Rec. She was Donna yeah. from Parks and Rec. Oh, was very she? Good. I didn't know. Very didn't good call. I love that show. Uh, two points for you. Thanks. And uh, the man in red is from the Dawn of the Dead remake. He's it, also from. I think he's in Modern Family. Modern Ty Family Burrell. Well. Yeah. That's that's really his claim to fame. But you're right. That, that's yeah. why I don't watch Modern Family. But that's is it Modern Family? Yes. Yeah, I, don't watch, Family. I don't watch it either. But I also I knew he was in that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know what it is. All right, plug back in your thing here. So, all right. So they're at the uh, uh, the man in red and uh, uh, Lipschitz or at Applebee's. They're ordering. All of a sudden, boom, Leslie Nielsen shows up. It was a confrontation between Man and Red and Leslie Nielsen. We can't go past what he says to Virginia. Like, oh, like, no. Yeah, this is he, weird. He, You're right. he, Super weird. So she's this kind of big, overweight black woman. And they're like, you got a Eight beautiful smile. Point. And then he looks at the he looks at her and says, hey, um, I'm going to give you my number. You're going to call me later. We're going to come over. I'm going to do awful things to you. And right. He almost like hypnotizes her sure. or something. Yeah. And she goes... Okay. A big smile. It's yep. real fucked up, it right? Is, it is super <laughs> messed up for sure. And yeah, and then Leslie Nielsen appears, like you're saying. And so Leslie Nielsen like shoes the man in red away, uh, however, and then uh, Leslie Nielsen's talking to uh, lips lipstick and says, "Hey, do you remember your seventh birthday when you uh, wished you could fly?" and he he flew. He recalls it in his head, and his he did wasn't paying in attention. his mind. Yeah. Right? He goes like, "Yeah, I, I remember." He goes, "Well, it's, it, you're you're chosen." You what do you guys think at this point? Is this really happening? I don't care. I have to think it's <laughs> happening because why would you have a dream sequence at the beginning, right? And then a dream sequence on top. A dream of sequence like, of okay. a dream sequence. Yeah. I hate a dream sequence on top of a dream sequence. Right. Leslie Nielsen says, "I want to send you on a mission. You got that hot you're girl on that you're a mission, and you're, you're wishing, wishing someone very lonely condition. condition. He's like, go find that girl you like so much, and then you take her bra and then you touch her booby. Uh, the right, the boob. right boob. Yeah. The right. Boob. So yeah, Rebecca is at the, in the first scene. Uh, you're on. A, you have a mission. Touch that right boob. Take that bra and bring it back to me to complete it." There's three questions, by the way, and there's some witty banner. Yeah. And so he goes, uh, the number three will serve you well. Mm. Well, in the part we skipped over, too, Leslie Nielsen says, you are he. Yeah. Several times. Sort of like that Matrix, Matrix right. so reference it's like, of you are the one. A few episodes ago, we had the Mysterious 2. Right. We had the he. And, and we had the she. she. Yeah. Yep. So uh, they're hanging out, and night has fallen, and they arrive to a party. And it's you guys a, remember those high school parties? Hell yeah! Yes, this oh, you threw do. me right back to the hell yeah. late nineties. Do you remember those parties? You weren't invited to parties. He was never invited no, to a party. Know. He was too busy making fish fillet sandwiches. <laughs> um, With Angie Vecco. My favorite part is uh, so yeah, like you're saying the three questions. Uh, um, he, he was like, he's like, I got to get some clarity here, Leslie Nielsen. Let me ask you a couple questions. I got to three questions. And so there is there is some witty banner. But the funniest thing I think in the whole pilot is Leslie Nielsen says, um, it's, you're asking me these questions. It's funny because normally people ask me what it was like working with OJ. <laughs> right. that, that was, was funny. Good. That one was that funny. Was All right. That was the one funny thing sure. in this episode. Adam is the the boy who is he. And like you said, number three will serve you well. So he's... He's, he goes to the party and he's looking for Rebecca because he's got this mission. And everyone he's coming in contact with, they all hate him. They all sure. tell him to fuck like, off. Tell him to fuck off. Yeah, yeah. He's pretty much ignored and hated yeah, at this party. He goes, he goes into a room with like 20 guys and like five whore bags. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, Rebecca says, Whore heads. Whore heads. Mm-hmm. Hashtag whore heads. Hashtag she, hiccups. And she goes, I'll go, in, I'll go into the closet with any guy that picks my number between one and and a hundred, right? And he goes a three, and she goes, "You're right." Yeah, I thought this like three would serve you well, would have a longer payoff, but here it is, like eight seconds later. Right? Yeah, he's using his number three to make out with uh, 
Rebecca Fellini. He goes back in uh, to the closet with Rebecca, and they're just talking, which is what happens every time you're in a closet with women. Is it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Huh? Not my experience, What's but that's fine. What's happening to you? I don't want to know. You sure? You don't want to talk about... Nah. It's just... An all hour, I can say is that... nine minutes in, you don't want to talk about My it? experience isn't the same as yours, okay. I guess is what I'll say. <laughs> all right. But, uh, yeah, so uh, Leslie Nielsen invites Red to step outside. And in the closet, Adam is very nervous, and they make, like, uh, awkward small talk. And then he makes it a move. It reminds me of E.T., right? When, when, when E.T.'s trying to feel that girl's boob. When Drew Barrymore is in the closet with E.T., and he's trying to feel her up. It was, like, <laughs> Jesus. Kind of exactly the same, right? Good. I guess so. Okay. I, don't, I don't remember that scene exactly. Reese's Pieces, right? <laughs> Oh, that's the end, though. Let's, oh, let's, thank let's, God. Let's, oh, thank God. Should we stop right there? Yeah, okay. stop. All right, let's stop it. Fuck it. Well, uh, can we fast forward to the end of Jenny McCarthy, at yeah. least? Yeah, Jenny McCarthy is in a helicopter. Yeah. Uh, that was a surprise. It was very very much a surprise. In 2019, do, are we saying fuck Jenny McCarthy? Like, yes, fuck her? She has literally killed children. I have no doubt about that. She's got children's blood on her hands. Well, before you say I'm anything serious. else, do you know anything about this? Uh, it's a vaccination thing. Yeah, right? yeah, anti-vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, like, in the '90s, mid late '90s, Chris Hardwick singled out. She parlays sure. that into MTV's The Jenny McCarthy Sketch Didn't Show. Start in Playboy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know she does these like Candies ads. Yeah. She's 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 the kind of the gross, funny, sexy chick. The one, the hot one who farts. The hot one who farts. That's perfect. Yeah. That's very good. That's an A plus summary right there. But now Jenny McCarthy's kind of like, hey. Fuck you, because we figured out a way to stop diseases, and you are figuring out a way to bring diseases back. Yeah. Right? So, kind of, seriously, kind of fuck Jenny McCarthy, right? Yeah, fuck Jenny McCarthy. And not in the sexy way. And That's like, why polio is back. <laughs> yeah. Bill Gates tried Guess to who's stop back. it. Bill Gates spent millions of dollars to yes. stop polio. Yes. Jenny McCarthy brought it back. Yep. Yeah. Fuck Jenny McCarthy. Yeah. I fuck her right in the face, guys. But she's hot, though. She's pretty yeah, good looking, y'all. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, good, pretty good looking. No. Super hot. She's probably almost 50 now. Really? And, and still hot. Still, I still fuck her. I think she still looks all right. But she's... 50? She, she's married to, like, uh, Donnie Wahlberg, too, right? Oh, is she? She yeah. was with Jim Carrey for a long time. She was with yeah. Jim Carrey? She Ugh. was with the guy... Um, do you guys ever watch the, the USA television program adaptation of the film Weird Science? Yes, I did watch okay, that. Okay, so the less nerdy kid, the kid who was supposed to be Anthony Michael Hall... right. She was married to him, I think, for really? a while. Yeah, yeah. All right. She has been around. Oh, absolutely. She's, She's been around. She's got some roast beef lips. Good God almighty. Jeez. Tim, why didn't Lipshit Saves the World work? Well, I think I hated Lipshits, and I think maybe a lot of people did. I, this kid was just the, the smug, condescending kid. It drove me nuts. Mm-hmm. And I think it was also just a few years too late, like this sort of genre of like high school parties and stuff. It was maybe kind of like, like post Bill and Ted. Post-head? Post-head. <laughs> Post-head. I, uh, I don't see this as like um, a teenage party. I, I almost see this as like an exper- experimentation in comedy and absurdity that was mm-hmm. almost, I would almost say the opposite of what you said, is maybe a few years early. Oh, really? Okay, it, so you guys want to fight now? I think, yeah, I, I, think I, wanna, we can fight. I think I want to fucking fight you now <laughs> because of that. All right, I'm down. I, it seems to me like it, it's an choose it's, your weapon. It's highly absurd. In 2007, we are kind of coming off. Uh, uh. Okay, that's I'm I'm fucking fuck fuck this show. Fuck both of you. I need a second to cool off. I'm sorry. Um, but part of the reason I think I hated this show so much. I'll, I'll keep the show going. Just hang, just hang out. Yeah, yeah. Me and Blake, will, me yeah, and Blake will talk for a minute. I'm fine, thanks. I think part of the reason I hated the show, remember Lipschitz, insufferable twat. He's just a twat. Um, <clears throat> but number two, like the absurdist comedy that you're talking about, Jason, I fucking hate this absurdist, bizarro comedy stuff. Like the parody stuff, the scary movie too, the scary movies that they referenced in it, you, you think uh, it was Naked a, Gun. You think it was in not, line with that? Yeah, just sort of like over the top, crazy, wacky, zany. Yeah, I, I like what's considered like uh, like intelligent um, absurdity. Yeah, but Leslie Nielsen, like when I was a kid, I liked the Naked Gun sure. movies. When I when I was a kid, like when I was like mm-hmm. ten to fifteen, I was like, oh, these are good, these are fun. Yeah, I don't think I would, I don't feel like they hold up to now to where I would look at them now. That's stupid absurdity. 
um, like stuff like The State. I like The State sure. or like Stella. Those that kind of comedy. I was like, oh, this is fun. This is silly. This is is intelligent to a degree. This is somewhere in the middle. I, I don't. I don't think it's so stupid. I don't think it's like because like I hate the scary movie. I think that those fucking suck. Right. But I don't think it's that what about bad. White chicks. I, lo- I hate white chicks. I'm not into white chicks at all. <laughs> you love you love hate white chicks. Are we talking about the movie or? Yeah. Oh no, I love that movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, what would you do to improve this, Blake? Uh, gosh, I guess like there was some star power. Like well, at that time, it wasn't. But um, t- to improve it, I guess I would slow it down a little bit. To me, it was very rushed, and so I'd slow it down a little bit. Okay. Just like making love. I like the star power. Ty Burrell, sure. it, uh, a star today. Back then, not a star. I think he's funny. I think he's, I, I'm like, modern family, I think he's hilarious. But back then you had Leslie Nielsen and Jenny McCarthy. Was there any, any other stars in it that I can, that were, like, uh, notable? Well, I thought Lips, Lipschitz was the guy from, uh, it was... In a lot of movies with, um, uh, what's the stoner guy? Seth Rogen? Yeah. I, I, oh, I know who he thinks. He, James he, Franco? No, no. no. He, he thinks he's uh, Jay Burchell. From Canada. I, it, at first, oh, I thought, yeah, I thought yeah. that's who he was at okay. first. Yeah, that's not him. But uh, no. I, I think it was only Leslie Nielsen and Jenny McCarthy. I like the idea that going forward, because they made a point to say celebrities <clears throat> are celebrities because they're working towards this goal of finding he. Like, there's this whole, like, Illuminati sure. kind of goofy right. shit happening. I like the idea because that they could plug anybody, in... You could bring anybody Finish in. each mm-hmm. other's sandwiches. That's right. You, sandwich. you, could, you could bring in any B Solid celebrity, Miller. and they'd come on for... And they'd work a day on this show, sure. and they'd... Yeah. For... I like that. They're, they're going to work for maybe five grand just for one day. I like that. I like the yeah. idea that you could you could have these celebrities just pop in. I think that I think that's a good aspect but of NBC, the show. NBC, this is it doesn't it doesn't fit for NBC. If this goes it's, forward, it's a Comedy Central, it's an Adult Swim. A Comedy Central, you think? Yeah, I okay. could even do a Comedy Central, but Adult Swim, Comedy Central, but not NBC. You can't put this on right before. Saturday Where does this go if it survives? Does he, does he just keep going on this weird, Ridiculous, wild adventure? Yeah. I mean, it's got to be a dream, right? Are we? Are we in? I don't know. Are we in line here? Maybe. Because it started off with a dream. I think that like sets the tone that this is this is just some completely absurd fantasies of this. Kid. How long until he wakes up from the dream? And does at when that dream is over, does he start a new dream? What right. is it, what is that? It's, or does it even matter if it's a dream? He can just continue to. We can just watch the dream play out. It's just meaning, meaningless adventures with jock straps, bras, and panties. Is that, right? is, that, is that what you think, Tim? It's just kind of a meaningless, ongoing adventure that he has? Why not? I don't know. I wouldn't watch this piece of shit, Joe. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Holy whoa. shit. Good <laughs> God, not man. not there yet, Tim. Sorry. Jesus, Tim. Don't put your finger on my butt before we're ready to go. I have never heard him say that. He's usually very willing. Good gravy. Um, I don't ask Blake anymore because he's like, um, God, what's the term? Idiot. Oh, a fucking dirty cheater. Uh, but is, IMDb, I, che- I cheated too. I looked this up. Oh, man. Why did you do that? Tim, I wanted to see what Tim else this kid had been time. in. The okay. guy. Three, two, one, 8.4. Out of how many uh, ratings? 712. I didn't pay attention to that. 71. Ooh, I was, I was barely you, off. You just take the two off and you got it. Yeah. Uh, critic reviews, Beth Sullivan from the Futon Critic says, there is a madcap zany quality to this show that's downright infectious. The matter-of-factness of its most outrageous qualities to silly touches like next time on at the end. And more importantly, let's take a moment to ask ourselves, why doesn't Leslie Nielsen have his own show? His signature deadpan delivery is full of force here. Um, when he's asked by Adam why he... While he's here, he responds, My father got drunk and had a one-night stand with my mother, and they didn't use protection. But that's not important. And when prodded, if he's really Leslie Nielsen or if he's some cosmic force taking on the form of Leslie Nielsen, he quips, Good question. Normally, people ask me about working with OJ. Uh, Between that and his childlike shouting matches with the man in red that he literally steals the show, uh, overall, it's a type of comedy that reminds us to forget about the drum beats of finding the next great comedy and just have some damn fun. Kudos to creator Dan Fogelman. And director Chris Cock, he's a real gem. I, I like that review. It's a review that doesn't take itself too seriously. Sure. And just is trying to enjoy it for what it is. Exactly. And, and 
when we watch a lot of pilots, we watch a lot of shitty pilots. We watched mm-hmm. about 203 of them. Right. That's, right? that's an accurate number. And we learned about 50 pilots in that we can't take these seriously because they've all failed. That's the whole point of doing the show. And so I think 50 episodes in, we kind of like changed how we're looking at them. And that's what we need to do with this one. We need to change how we're looking at it. Don't take it so seriously. Viewer reviews. Leslie Nielsen and Brooklyn Decker. Damn, I feel like this, uh, if this pilot was a few years later when TV was embracing the absurd a little more, it could have made it to series. Um, Donnie's Corner says, thanks for sharing this. I read the pilot script years ago and thought it was funny. I can see why it was not picked up. Feels like it would be better suited for some silly close-ended standalone movie. Uh, Joshua Telemach says, absolutely terrible. No wonder it didn't get picked up. Writers were just throw th- throwing things at the wall to see what stuck. Uh, Gordon Chalupa says, um, NBC liked the show, but they felt it would be too edgy for network television. I'm going to drop that Chalupa review. Not bad. Not bad piece of comedy there. Uh, Dre- Drebin31 says, This looks hilarious. I was really mad when I found that NBC didn't pick it up. Anything with Leslie Nielsen should automatically be greenlit. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCF Airport. Local time is 11-11 and the temperature is 69 degrees. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captain Turn off the what? Sign. I feel like it's not plugged in. You feel like this isn't plugged in? Yeah. I got it up as long as I can go. You can't hear it. You can't hear it? Oh, I can hear it. Okay. Seems fine to me. Whatever you say works. Um, Now we grade lip shits. Ugh. We talked about it. Tim. Yeah. Tim agreed with me about the uh, the dog brothel. That's pretty much... That's what I took away from the top of the show. Sure. He agreed with me on an idea, and he gave you ideas for your show that you should implement. Sure. And we hate animals, and we love humans. All right. You guys think the animals are less than humans, which they, without are, a doubt. they absolutely are. They absolutely Fucking are. Fucking ridiculous. But Tim, yeah, we grade this show on a one to seven scale. One being the worst. That's a Roy Biggins, and a seven being Brian Hackett being the best. Awesome. How do you rate? So uh, lip shit. <clears throat> excuse me. Hold. Can just wait a minute. Okay. Just give it. Give him a second, Tim. Lip shit <laughs> saves the world. There you go. Good job, buddy. So I listened to what you guys said. You got to judge it based on like the quality of the show, not necessarily my feelings about the show. Yeah. Because you're racist. I, I am racist. I hate this absurdity comedy stuff. It's just yeah. not my bag. I would never watch this show, but I can see that some people would find it funny. I'll, I'll give it a four. That's for, a very fair rate. For myself, it's a one. I would never watch it. But. Whoa, so Whoa. you gave it a one. Dual score. For the show, you gave it a four. Sure, in terms of like the ha, quality have we ever of the had show. A dual, a dual score before? I don't think so. I think that's Couch Pilots first. All right. You have to pick All right. one. Is that good that I no, broke? No, no, you have to pick one. You have to pick one? Four. one or I'll a four. four. Wow. Four. Really holding his feet to the fire four. there. Because there's no stakes here. I could give a shit. It's a four. Oh. Okay. Well, fuck you. This is important to me. <laughs> Captain Philip Rester, I turn to you. How do you rate Lip Shit Saves the World? I loved Leslie Nielsen in this. Um, it's just like high school boner comedy, right? It's, it's, boner cl- comedy. it's classic boner comedy. I what's love a, that. What's a boner comedy? I wrote that down because I thought it was going to be good. I like that. I'm you laughing at it. Shit on me. I'm not shitting it's on you. I love it. Comedy. I love the, like, bo- I lo- <laughs> the word boner. Is a top ten this, favorite word of mine. This, this is like Fast Times at Ridgemont High. How about Fast Times at Boner High? <laughs> Nailed it. Fast Times at Ridgemont <laughs> High in two thousand seven for a TV show. It, eh. it, it is. It's just it's bras, jock straps. Uh, Leslie Nielsen was awesome in this. I thought he was the best part of it. I get. I gave it a Leslie bump. Okay. Five. 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 Okay. Let me let me interrupt. Uh, you're having a show with Amanda soon. We've learned that in addition to diarrhea, boner is a. Oh, I didn't know that. It's right. a great right word. It's a trigger word. Because I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be with her pretty soon, so I'm gonna write right. boner. Boner and diarrhea. Those are trigger words. Boner, yeah, yeah. Diarrhea. How does Amanda feel about um, naked lady playing cards? Oh, well, that's uh, we'll have to ask her. I don't know. Blake that's... has them, and he made me look at them on a recent episode of his bowling show. Oh, can I look at them? Yeah, sure. 
I like take, I like I'll, naked ladies. Let me take you to my balls. <laughs> Some of the cards have vaginas on them. Okay, into that. All right. A lot like, of them have boobs on them. I yeah. like I like Some vaginas of them and boobs. Have neither one of them. <laughs> Ace of spades. That's right. Club of club of diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> Slamming myself. Um, this is a this is kind of a tough one for me. You, you wanted you wanted to you wanted to score this high. Yes. Right. You wanted to. Yes. Right. Before you watched it, you want. Will you? What the fuck are you doing? You've I'm done peeling like, off the label and dip, putting it in third, the bottle. Because okay, right, I. What is that, that bothering you? I keep thinking that he's trying to. Those fine. are his beers. He can do whatever it's he wants fine, with them. Whatever. It's fine. Um, Originally, before you watched this, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you give my rating. No, no, seriously, <laughs> seriously, no, no, seriously. What did you What did you think? Uh, I think. What did you think? I thought. Uh, you originally were like gung ho about this. Uh, this is your kind of comedy, Leslie Nielsen stuff. And so you were wanting to score this high, and then you watched it, and you were like, I liked it, but I didn't. You gave it a five. I think that's right. <laughs> I think you're right, actually. Um, I'll There's go into a little bit more detail. You're scoring your scoring and your butthole. <laughs> my butthole? Criminy. That, <laughs> it's news to me that you know my butthole. Um, Hashtag. I, I will say that I will give it a five. Yeah. Um, I want. I don't know where this goes next. You said something that I, I disagreed when you said it, but now thinking about, it, I think I agree with it. You said it moves too fast. There are some shows like um, like Arrested Development. Early early Arrested Development moved very fast. A lot happens in twenty two sure. minutes on that show, but it's a great program early on. I don't know where this goes next. I don't know what kind of weird. I mean, at the end of the show, he's on a helicopter with Leslie Nielsen. And Jenny McCarthy flying off while as, assumingly the devil is, is firing a, a missile at them. Like, it's fucking crazy. Sure. Where does that show... And he wants to fuck his sister. Who doesn't? But he doesn't know it's his sister. Oh, sure. But I, I don't know how I don't know how it can continue. I'd be interested to find out. This is just meaningless adventures with jocks, jock straps and bras. This... I, you guys keep saying stuff like that. I, I don't feel like it is really? like a high school no. comedy. I, I don't feel like it is like this dumbed down high school. I, I feel like there's a lot more that could could be done with this than just high school centric comedy. When like you're that. watching this and they're talking about he and she, yeah, did you not think about the mysterious two? I didn't really. Really, that's, that's, no, I, that's the first thing I thought of. I, I I think there were funny parts. Leslie Nielsen is a legend. Um, I don't know why that's funny. Penises. Uh, penises? penises. Oh. <laughs> Boners. Milk bags. Hey, do you guys like milk bags or milk sacks better? Which is better? And and talking about what? <laughs> Cows. What? Cows. I refuse to answer that. I give it a five. You give it a five. Tim gives it a four slash one. And with that, we close the book on Lipshit Saves the World, and we will never speak of that show again. Yeah. But join us next time, won't you please, when we watch the pilot episode of the hour and a half long Annihilator. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. Humanoid killer robots stalk a newspaper man who has knowledge of their existence. One of the robots is made to look like his girlfriend. You can find the entire episode of... You lost me an hour and a half. No, I know. I said that on purpose. Um, you can find the entire episode of An- Annihilator by subscribing to Couch Pilots and SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue I links in our show notes, or go to YouTube, Tim. And you know what to do, Tim. If you don't put a period in, it's not my fucking problem. You're a grown-ass man. You don't put a period in there. We've talked to each other about it for eye on 80 episodes. If that's the case, if why you- can't I remember because you refuse to. Yeah. Yeah. You don't take my advice, I don't take your advice. All right? Uh, go to couchpilotspodcast.com. It's our website. We own it. No one can take it away from us as long as we make our payments. And even then, uh, we have all of our episodes there, and you can find our, all of our social media bullshit there. You can also call 910pilots1. And Blake, what does that uh, translate to? Yeah, it's 910... Uh, <coughs> Seven, seven five, four five four six, six eight, eight seven one. Very good. I didn't think you had it in you. Yeah. Or you can go to Patreon and you can support us there. Um the thing is about Patreon, if you give us your money, we will take it from you. Sure. 
right? Right. Yeah. Who won't take money? Have you ever not taken money? Yeah, I know you would take money over a dog I've done or a homeless stuff guy. To take money. What's that? I've done stuff for money. Oh, let's get into that. All right, sure. What have you done for money? Have you are you are you telling are you revealing to us that you've been a, a gigolo? Well, I told you the the story about that girl with that big, huge milk sacks that uh, <laughs> milk bags. Is what I prefer. <laughs> okay, milk G- given bags given the choice, that took me to Burgers and bought me guest shorts and a bunch of clothes, and then had sex with me. You ever have a lady buy you guest shorts? No, I can't say that happened. These are yeah. blue jean shorts, right? <laughs> When those were oh, in fashion, yeah, and jorts, had, jorts, yeah, yeah, and they had uh, Daisy the dudes. button fly, the button fly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So fuck me, right? <laughs> so, did but you... I can't be bought. Well, that sounds anymore. like you just were. <laughs> yeah, it I sounds mean, like you was, just told us a story time. where you were that bought. Was a long time ago, that was bought. But was she like, I'm not going to have sex with you until no, no, you're no, in no. these pants, no, no. or like it was more like, I liked having sex with, with you so much. Mm-hmm. I'm going to buy you this stuff. In hopes that you will continue to have sex with me. And did you? Yes. But the first one was free. Oh, yeah. Okay. If you saw his teeth. You've got to get him hooked on the product. That's right. First one's always free. Exactly. Yeah. Just like on Wentworth on Netflix. Check it out. You want to do that? What? Five and five next season? Yeah. No, we're on it. We're, it's, it's happening. Okay. <clears throat> I, I bet I own a lot of the shows that are... like. I, I think it's going to be tough, too, because I don't know that they're all going to be on Netflix. They may not be available. This no, may this may this whole season may be a deviation from our uh, three pillars. Oh, for sure. While we have Tim here, Tim, what are some of your favorite shows? Like, the, if, if you had to choose, and you won't get the opportunity to, but if you did, <laughs> um, the pilot episodes for which you would watch, uh, it's got to go Lost, right? One of the I best don't. shows of all time. I love no. Lost. Yeah, but uh, Breaking Bad. Okay. No. Uh, I never saw. You never saw Breaking Bad? I saw it. Netflix. Did you see El Camino? Yes, excellent. Did you see it? I, I started watching it, and I, I didn't finish it. And, and also with you. I will see it, though, but it's excellent, you say. I love it. Okay, yeah. awesome. Um, Jeez, I don't know. I don't watch a lot of shit either these days. Real world? <laughs> you can take that it's one back if you want. All right. <laughs> hey, Real World Season 1, Episode 1? Sure, yeah. Why with, not? Uh, with Eric, right? Eric and Eric uh, Julie. And Julie, yeah. And then the black guy who is a drug Kevin? dealer. Yeah. Kevin. Yeah. And Andre was the guy that wow. looked like he was from Pearl Jam, Blake's favorite band. Pearl you know Jam. a lot Hold of on a shit second. from the first. What did you say? Blake loves Pearl Jam. No, wait, wait. The f- <laughs> one of the guys from the first season of Real World is in Pearl Jam? No, it just looks like he's from Pearl Jam. Oh. oh. Andre. He's oh, got the yeah, long, right. yeah, long that. hair, yeah, long kind of yeah. curly hair. Don't call me Real World. <clears throat> and then there was Becky and Heather. <laughs> And all those, oddly, it's so, yeah, weird, how about it's so that? weird to think that we live in a time where all of those people are dead. All of them. R.I.P. Weird to think. Oh, it's been a while. It's a nice time. Three stories. Any other uh, shows you can think of you'd want to watch? Nah, that'll do it. A- NBC Nightly News? Do you sure. think I should do Utopia if I can find it? Yeah, why not? I, I do, too. I, I think, think you should do it, because it sounds like a fucking shitty show. No, and no I'll, and Utopia was... And I, don't, get, I don't know Utopia, but I've heard, I'll I've get heard more good you things from you and Amanda. Utopia... I don't know Utopia don't know outside Jesus. of him talking about like a madman. <laughs> His eyes lit up when I said Utopia earlier. Yeah, they did. Oh, me and Amanda both would have a podcast about Utopia if it was still out there. Well, maybe maybe we should invite guests based on the pilots. Speaking of seeing, listen to Amanda on the show. Check out Guys in a Bowling Alley, where she's going to be on pretty soon. There you go. You have her, Brian, and Derek on an upcoming yeah. episode. That that'd be yeah. awesome. I doubt Hoover shows up, but you well, might be right. You it. might be right. What stopped you from having a challenged episode? Huh? You. Your your oh. your availability. <laughs> oh, did you? Oh, is that one of the dates you flew yeah. past me that I didn't? Yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry, buddy. It'll all come back around as long as he keeps doing the show. He'll get all three of you on together. How about the Office? That'd be a good pilot. Yeah, love the Office. Yeah. What? Do you th- do British we, or American? Both. Either. We do um, yeah. Utopia. You have Amanda on as a guest. Who? Amanda. I want to take you oh, by the God. head and make you want to stand, Amanda. Do you have diarrhea boners? Diarrhea boners. Do you have a message of positivity before Sure you do. Uh, check out Guys in a Bowling Alley. <laughs> Guys in a Bowling Alley podcast. Um, it's available on iTunes and Spotify and hopefully all the other places. But uh, yeah, it's, it's my new thing. I'm kind of... Drifting away from couch pilots. Yeah, no, I've I'm noticed. To do my own thing. I've noticed. Yeah, 
yeah. <laughs> and trying to like do something entertaining. I was like different. I was like Blake doesn't hardly do any work for the show. There's no way he could do less work. You're finding a way. And the, no, I didn't find a way because instantly I had the idea and then said, hey, Jason, yeah, yeah. do all this work for me. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> you're like, how can I do less work on Couch Pilots and still get Jason to work on my new show? And God damn it, you found a way. I love you, brother. You're it was, right. it was, I, I very much appreciate you being on the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tim, look forward to you sometime. I'll be there someday. Available. Love to. But... Uh, we had we had fun, right? It's 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 a fun. It's different. Your new show is very fun. Do you yes. want to ask me the premise? Or... <sighs> what's um, what's this, what's uh, bowling town about? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't known where I'm bowling. Uh, guys in a bowling alley is is basically it's like a game show with bowling mm-hmm. combined, and uh, we have a good time. Uh, everybody bowls. It doesn't matter if you're good or bad. Uh, the score doesn't matter because at the during the show I give points, take points away. Uh, there's challenges, and just if I don't like you, or if you talk shitty, or if you do something funny, I give you more points. And at the end, somebody gets a trophy. To yep. Take home. Yep, an actual trophy because take home. you made them. Because I made, and I've got a plan to make better trophies going forward. Because I know, really? I know you're you're weirded out by the shitty trophies. I no, made. I'm not weirded out at all. Let's let's <sighs> talk. Through, you want to talk through this real quick? Yeah, sure. Tim, I went to uh, the Habitat for Humanity store, right. as I'm apt to do. Well, no, it's still around. Oh. And uh, I found two buckets full of like plastic and metal trophy toppers. And I said, Blake, do you want to give these out on your show so you can have a, a, something worth sure. playing for? He there's, said, yes. There's a physical thing that you can <clears throat> right. take home. Each, on the each, shelf. each show, somebody else takes it home. So I yeah. started making these trophies in my garage. Oh, you make them? Yeah, well, I take the toppers, and I, I take a little piece of scrap wood. I sand it down. I'll drill a hole in there. I'll paint it. And then I'll just screw in the thing. It's real easy, right? I just, mm-hmm. And I give them to him like six at a time for a dime, and he's fucking complaining about no, I, what, it. But how did I complain <laughs> The one that I made it? for uh, Stephanie. I didn't complain. <laughs> no, I did not complain. He hated it. Does it suck? Did it, it suck? It did suck. It did suck, but he, uh, but he's, but he's a, in a beggar situation, right? Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you hard in the ass. No, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna boots. find a better way to make them though, for real. But I, I, I'm not. I didn't have any problem with any of them except that. one. I know, except that one. <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna come guy and pick it up and do something. He never came by and picked up right. because you told me not to. I didn't tell you. you said I got it. You said I, have, I got, I got it. So duck so bowling, is there bullshit. any difference in duck bowling other than the size of the ball? Uh, the scoring is different. Mm. And the lane is different. And there, and there are ducks <laughs> and there are ducks involved. Yeah. Mm. So a lot and of there, a lot there's of actual like anywhere in the country, if you're duck bowling, there's going to be physical pin setters and that's Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. true. Interesting. All right, well, I think that's enough. All right, Tim, thank you so much for being <laughs> we're here. We're about ready to fight. Is that what? Like, I, I think we're going to get into a bo- uh, like a bare knuckle Baja boxing. Blast. We're going to get a bare <laughs> bare knuckle Baja blast if you're not careful. <laughs> I love you and I appreciate the help you. Do. I love you. I, I bow to you and does I honor you. It seem like I don't. Does it no, seem like I'm just fucking okay. with you. <laughs> Tim, are you okay? I'm good. All right, I'm good. I don't know where you're going. Uh, I just don't get it. This this pilot may have been hat. rough, but it's always a smooth flight. Like, chat pilot. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to I haven't really screamed for a while. Do it. No, I'm not, no, I'm not going to do it. Right. Diddy wants it. No, she does. She hates it. No, she? Diddy wants it. I oh, want it. I Diddy want it. wants it? Diddy going to get it. Not now, but I'll do it. I have this have, episode? I have to have someone piss me off. Uh, you're an asshole. What the fuck is that? <laughs> your trophies are what shit. Is that your trophies are shit. <laughs> no, that, that that's just true though. No, I, that's why I, he he wanted me to get like uh, he wanted to buy like like stamps for him. So like, you know, right. I was like, no, 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 no stencils, stencils. And I said, no, it's fine. I'll I'll just like take a sharpie. I'll take a sharpie and I'll write. You know, just like ghetto style. Yeah. And he was like, I, I guess. I was like, no, no, that makes it cooler. He's like, whatever. You do have cool handwriting. I'll be honest with you. Ooh. It's cool handwriting. Hey, Tim. Are you, are you checking you, Tim out? You're very cute, too. Yeah, <laughs> you look like you're thanks, checking buddy. him out. A and tiny he, compliment, this guy. Thriving <laughs> on it. Look oh, at him. He lives so for deprived. It. And oh, so yeah, neglected. It's, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm neglected for sure. Uh, d- 
Hey Tim, did you want to plug anything? Because we, <laughs> <laughs> you were not available. Are you still recording? Yeah. No. Do you want to plug anything? No. Internet freak show. We'll do that one. What about challenge? Nah. I mean, you only have ten thousand listeners. Challenge is popular enough. I don't need that. <laughs> I'm good. Wish I had Tim's problems. <laughs> hey Tim, thank you for doing the artwork for uh, Couch Pilots. Oh my, my pleasure, buddy. Two hundred. That was awesome. My pleasure. We should have mentioned that earlier. Yeah, the 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 poster. It was awesome. No, thank my you pleasure. so much. Happy to do it. It's a little fuzzy when you put it on. <laughs> it's framed it in my house, actually. Is it? Yeah, it's framed and hung up in my house. Yeah, that's it. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>